the natural world can be much better understood if you assume that it has purposes, if you assume that it has design. It, it, it helps you to understand how things work. Um, and I believe that the human mind, properly understood, will give us a much deeper understanding of nature and not just of the mind. Um, in the 19th century, uh, a German philosopher named Franz Brentano asked a very important question, uh, and I think answered it very well. He asked the question, what is it that is unique about the mind that makes it different from matter? We tend to think of mind and matter as different things, but what is the, is there one thing that makes something mental as opposed to physical? And he said, actually there is. And he said, it's intentionality. And intentionality is, a, is, an, is an ancient term. It was a term that dates back to Aristotle and was used by scholastic philosophers. And what intentionality means is that it is the ability for something to be about something else. For example, um, if I'm thinking now about um, Washington, D.C., my thought is intentional in a sense that I am thinking about something that's not me. I'm thinking about a city or I'm thinking about um, a doorway or thinking about my wife. So the ability for a thought to be about something is unique to the mind because no physical object is, is about anything in the absence of a mind. All right? a, a rock sitting on a beach isn't about anything. A tree isn't about anything. Only a thought can be about something. So. Brentano said that if we are to understand the mind, we have to understand intentionality. We have to understand how a thought can be about something. And of course, you can't explain intentionality using materialistic precepts because matter is never about anything intrinsically. And materialists have tried. In the 20th century, they've taken up Brentano's challenge. There have been many different efforts, uh, for example, by Daniel Dennett, who was a materialist philosopher, to explain intentionality as some kind of material thing, but it can't be explained that way. What's remarkable about intentionality and what the scholastic philosophers understood is that intentionality is in some sense a reflection of a grander aboutness in nature. And that grander aboutness is called teleology. And teleology is the tendency for processes in nature to go somewhere, to become something. For example, um, the classic example is an acorn growing into an oak tree. Teleologically, it seems to be what the acorn is designed to do, to become an oak tree. The acorn doesn't become um, uh, a, uh, an ocean or, 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 or a corvette or, uh, or a flower. It becomes an oak tree. It has a very specific direction and a goal. And it's a kind of aboutness in things, that they're all directed. And the scholastic philosophers realize that intentionality in the human mind is kind of a reflection of this aboutness in all of nature. And essentially, it's a reflection of purpose in nature. And that you can't understand the mind or you can't understand nature unless you understand purpose. And in fact, biologists have tried, because they are allergic, if they're Darwinist biologists, they're allergic to teleology. They're allergic to the notion of purpose. They've tried to explain biology without explaining, without invoking purpose, and they can't do it. You can't explain a living thing without explaining what the purpose of the parts of that living thing are. You can't explain the heart unless you explain that the purpose is to pump blood. You can't explain the eye unless you understand the purpose is to see. Where do those purposes come from? Well, those purposes are kind of like intentionality. They're kind of like a mind. And the implication is that behind the universe, there's a, there's a mind, a grand mind, a mind that is reflected in the way the universe works. And as St. Thomas would say, that is what all men call God. So what really helped me in my personal understanding and in my faith is that I see that everything in nature that shows purpose that shows goal-directedness, that shows teleology and intentionality, is a reflection of a much higher mind. It's a reflection of God. Materialism, in my viewpoint, 
is not even really a philosophical perspective. It's just a mistake. Uh, it's just, it's like saying, it's like claiming that two plus two is five is mathematics. It's not really mathematics, it's just an error. And materialism isn't even sufficiently coherent, uh, in my view, to qualify as, as, a, as a philosophical perspective. Um, the best philosophy on this originated with the ancient Greeks, particularly with Aristotle. And what Aristotle proposed and what really became mainstream uh, metaphysics um, uh, for such philosophers as St. Thomas Aquinas and the scholastic philosophers is that things that exist in the world are composites of form and matter. And that form is the intelligible aspect of things. And that matter is what makes something an individual thing and not just sort of an, a theoretical thing but that the, the actuality, the intelligibility of something is in the form, it's not in the matter. Form is what makes things real. And what I believe materialism does in modern science is it denies that the form of things is the most important aspect of them. That we need to, for example, in biology, we need to, to focus on the purposes of biological structures not just on the details of the structure itself. We need to know why they're doing what they're doing. And once you start looking for purposes, you start looking at immaterial aspects of nature, at form, and uh, that leads you out of materialism. The reality is that if you are a consistent materialist, you can't even do good science. Let's face it, if, if you think the only thing that exists is matter extended in space, then why would you pay any attention to physical laws? Is Newton's law a matter extended in space? Is Einstein's theory, uh, Einstein's equations of gravitation, are they matter extended in space? No. The best science is science that looks for deep conceptual principles that underlie the natural world. And that's inherently not a materialistic perspective.